Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, which unfortunately at the moment is closed due to the coronavirus pandemic that we are all dealing with. I hope everyone is doing well and staying healthy. I made it through my first week of classes, actually almost today we have a presentation. So uh, doing a lot of Zoom teleconferencing with my students, I'm sure that you guys are all experiencing that as well. So today's video, we're gonna look at using a plugin for Grasshopper called Karumba. And Karumba is a FEA analysis tool, which FEA stands for finite analysis, finite element analysis. And we'll look at that a little more closely in a second. But what, you, what you're looking at here on the Rhino screen is a deformed, the form is a hyperbolic surface that we're gonna end up making, but now it's been deformed in this case uh, in the Z direction, so it's it's being squashed, it's being pushed down. So that's we're gonna one of the things that we're gonna look at is applying multiple loads, so different load cases. So this is a load in the Z direction, that's load case zero, and then load case one is in the X direction. So the first load we saw was a gravity load, and the second one could be considered a a wind load or something pushing from the side and then we could look at both of those together. Okay, before we jump into that, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go ahead and click on subscribe and then click on the bell and choose all notifications so you don't miss out on any of my latest videos. I have a lot of content here that you will find useful and helpful and one of the things that recently happened was I made it to 5,000 subscribers so I want to thank you all for that and my next goal is to get to 6,000 subscribers so if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe and help me reach my goal also connect with me on Instagram where recently I made it to a thousand followers so my goal here is 2,000 followers and you can see what I'm up to with my students at IIT or what I was up to before we went to e-learning. I'll have to maybe do some video capture of our Zoom sessions. Uh, my latest video was mesh coloring. Looked at several different techniques for coloring meshes, so that was a, was a popular one. Okay, so I mentioned finite element analysis. So if you do a Google search for finite element analysis, uh, one of the things that, that stands out to me is this, you know, this method of, in this case, since <clears throat> I'm an architect and my students are architecture students, we're looking at using Karumba as a, a structural analysis tool, uh, a computational form finding tool. So if you've taken structures courses and you've done, say, analog methods of structural analysis, you know, with your pen or pencil on paper doing calc uh, calculations, uh, finite element analysis requires the computer. And if I click on images, I get all these really great images showing different uh, stress gradients. And one that I like to, to look at when I explain what finite element analysis is, there is an image of a can that's being crushed. And what you can see is where, in this case, where the, the, the stresses are uh, impacted. So this green element comes and it crushes the can. And right where it crushes the can, the color gradient is, is full on red. And I think this is really helpful uh, for architects to start to understand finite element analysis and then if they're working with structural engineers they can at at the very least at the very minimum 
have a conversation and be speaking uh, a similar language and then they can share these models early on in the design process. So I mentioned the plugin is Karumba 3D. Um, so I'm at their website, karumba3d.com. It's a great group of people that have been putting this plugin together for a number of years now and it's really being used quite a bit in architectural practice and structural engineering. Under learn you have some examples and you have some tutorials and I made a tutorial a while back which was form finding of a shell. It's a little bit different than the one we're doing today. Uh, so go ahead and check that one out and I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. All right, so let's jump into the tutorial. Okay, so what we're covering here is computational form finding using finite element analysis. And these, these are our inputs, or this is what we need to, to create the analysis. We need a boundary surface to analyze. I'm saying boundary surface or mesh. You might start with a mesh, you might start with a surface. If you start with a surface, you're going to need to convert the surface to a mesh. So you're going to have to convert to mesh. And then you're going to have to define the structure. So I plan on, on really digging deep into Karumba through a series of videos. And each video is going to deal with a different type of structure. So today we're looking at a shell, shell structure. So when you define the structure, you'll also need to define the support or supports. You'll need to add the loads, and then you'll need to analyze the model. So our first steps, we're going to create the boundary surface. And I'm going to do this through a series of elliptical curves that I loft together. So I'm just going to double click and type in ellipse. OK, so let's set. Now the, the units of this, I don't even remember to be honest if I'm working in feet, inches, meters, centimeters, it doesn't really matter. Um, so those units are up to you. So the radius of this, I'm going to make this radius 8. And the second radius, I'm going to make that 6. Okay, so there's my my first ellipse and that is uh, the the plane for that is the world xy so it's you know using the zero xy plane I'm gonna take all of this so I'm gonna make a series of three ellipses stacked one above the other so I'm gonna take all this information I could copy and paste it I'll show you another way to do this too I haven't done this in a while but if I start to drag all of these um, capsules, if I start to drag them and then press my alt key down, it makes a drag copy. Okay, so this one I'm going to set, this ellipse I'm going to set to 5 and 5. And you see they're on the same plane at the moment. So I'm going to raise the second one by changing its plane. And I'm going to do that with a construct point. And the construct point allows me to enter in a Z height. And I'm going to enter in a Z height of 3. OK. We'll, uh, we'll organize this a little bit better in a little bit after we get all three ellipses. OK, so now the next ellipse, I'll just take all of this, start to drag it, hold my Alt key down. And this ellipse, I'm going to set to 8 and 6. And I'm going to change the Z height to 6. OK, so there we have our three ellipses. And we are going to loft a surface between those three curves. So I'll plug these in one at a time using my shift key so I can plug multiple curves in. And I'm doing that in order to make sure that the loft works correctly. Okay, so there we have our lofted surface. All right, so let me take some time to organize these. So I'll select those three, line them up to the right. I'll take 
all of these number sliders, line those up to the right. Oh, this one. Okay, I'll take these two, line those up, and line those two up. Okay. So this is just to keep things nicely organized. This is my boundary surface. So I'm going to add a scribble to that and name that boundary surface. Okay, I can I can group all of that together using control G and I can right click and change the color. Okay, so that's our that's our boundary surface. So what's next? What's next is we need to convert this to a mesh. And there's lots of ways to convert surfaces to meshes. Uh, a couple that you have probably used before is there's one uh, BREP mesh. There is also a mesh surface. So those are two ways. Uh, the first one, the settings are embedded into the capsule, so it's a little bit more challenging to work with. The second one has a UV count, so you can define what's called the mesh resolution, which we'll get to in a second. And another way is to do it through Karumba. So you see here in Grasshopper, I have the Karumba menu open. And under Utilities, there is a mesh BREPS capsule. So I'm going to go ahead and plug my loft into that BREP. And you'll see that now we have some triangulation introduced. So we're looking, we're now looking at our mesh. So we're going to talk about the mesh resolution. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide everything but this mesh BREP, BREPS capsule. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts shift control I which selects everything else and then I'll right click in the canvas and choose preview off so I'm only looking at the mesh so the mesh resolution if I hover over this it says target mesh size one locally defined value so and that value is set to one by default so the lower the value the tighter the mesh the more, let's say, triangles in the mesh, the higher the resolution. So you have to be careful with this, and you have to be careful that you don't set it to zero. If you set it to zero, you're guaranteed that it will crash. So let's look at setting up a number slider. So I'm gonna say that my number slider is between one and, so one less than 20, and I'll add some decimal places in there. I'll just add three decimal places. And I'm going to crank that all the way up to 20. All right, I plugged it into the wrong place there. All right, so let's plug that into mesh resolution. So what you see is this can control the polygons or the mesh triangles. So I don't always have to work with a super high mesh resolution from the very beginning. Now I set that to 1 so that I can go all the way down to 1 without that crashing. So the lower the value, the higher the mesh resolution. Okay, so that's the resolution that we're going to work with now. Okay, so let's go back to our little outline. So converted to mesh. The next thing that we need to do is define the structure. So I mentioned today we're going to look at a shell. Okay, so in the Karumba menu, you can, you know, when you're analyzing a model, you're pretty much going from left to right here in the sequence, although we did start with 8 with the utility. <laughs> but if I look under model, I'm going to find mesh to shell. So I'm going to add a little scribble here just to let my future self know what I was doing. So here I'm defining the structure. Okay. 
and we'll go ahead and plug that mesh into the mesh. Okay, so this capsule doesn't output anything. But now when we assemble our model, we'll see what's necessary. We'll see what we need. So back under model, I'm going to choose assemble model. Okay, so I'm not going to use the point input. All right, so I've had some issues with students when they use that. So I'm just crossing that out. Okay, so I'm going to use element. Okay, so what's left at the moment, what's left to do an analysis is defining the supports and adding the loads. So we're going to start by defining the supports. So I'll add my scribble. Okay, so for these supports, I want to use, I want to anchor or define my supports at the very base of this hyperbolic form. So at the, at the bottom, at the zero Z height. And if I, if I add a panel here just to give me a visual reference, I'm going to plug my points into this panel. I'm going to open this panel up. Okay, so you see XYZ values for every point in that hyperbolic mesh. So if I scroll down, it's in ascending order until the very end where it has all the, the zero points. So I want to use a strategy to basically grab out all of those zero points from this list and I'm going to do that using a smaller smaller than capsule okay so I what I what I want to tell it is I want to say select any points with a Z value I could say less than one but let's see I have a point six at the very top so I could say any value less than point six now that 0.6 value could change, so I'll, I'll use a value that's pretty close to zero. And by saying it's less than something pretty close to zero, it's only going to select my Z values of zero. So we're going to use a deconstruct. It's a deconstruct point. Okay, so let me... Let me work on keeping this organized. So I'll plug my points in. And we're just looking at the Z values. So that's my first number. And my second number, I'm going to use 0 0.05. I can use 0 0.005 in case I add more points to the model. So 0 0.005. And what this does is this is going to output I'm going to get another panel here. So false. False are the values or the points that it's not going to use because they're above 0 0.005. So 0 0.0 is 0 0.6. It's not going to use that. As I scroll down, point, uh, 1.2 is greater than 0 0.005. It's not going to use that. But if I get down all the way to the bottom, and I pull this list all the way to the bottom, so you see points 591, it has a zero Z height, and that 591 is true. So it's going to call out or call out those points. Okay, so let's, just to clean up the definition a little bit, I'm going to delete these two panels. Uh, we can keep this one for now. Okay, so I'm going to use a cull, and in this case it's a pattern because I'm using trues and falses. Okay, so my cull pattern is coming out of the smaller than, and my list of points is coming from the structure. And there you see that it is using all those base points. Pretty cool, huh? 
All right, so we have those base points. Those are those are the supports. So select all this, make a little group out of it. I'm going to change this to RGB. Okay, so those those are the supports. Now we need a Karumba capsule. I can't just plug that uh, that list of points directly into the support. It has to go through a Karumba capsule. So we're still in number one here. We're still under model. I can grab support and I can plug the list of points into position index. Okay, so we are going to turn on all of the conditions. We're going to turn on uh, the, the rotational conditions and we're going to turn on uh, the torsion conditions to allow this thing move, to allow the, the supports to move freely in, in all directions. Uh, so we're going to turn all these on and we're going to plug that into support. Okay, so that's our support. So I'm going to add in a load and then we'll analyze the model and we'll come back and talk about um, the different types of loads that we can add. Okay, so f now we're on number two here. So I'm going to choose loads. And all the loads now, they're in the older versions of Karumba, there used to be a capsule for the different types of loads. But now it's all combined into one and then the capsule itself changes dynamically as you choose from the pull down. Okay, so I'm going to change this to a point load. And I'm going to use a scribble. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to call it negative x force because it's the force is going to be pushing down in the negative, uh, negative z, negative z direction. So we'll call this one negative z force. Okay, so we have that. And I need to define the amount of force. Not only the amount of force, but also the direction of the force. Because if I hover over that, uh, at the moment, that's empty. So I'm going to put in a Z vector. So unit Z. And I want that to be in the negative direction. So I'm going to add a negative capsule. And then I need the amount of force. And that can vary. The amount of force can vary. For right now, I'm going to make a number slider between 0 and, let's say, 20.555. Okay. And we'll give it a value for now. Okay, so it's a point load. So I have to define the points that I'm applying this load to. And I can get that from my mesh to shell points. Plug that into position index. And then this is going into load. Okay, so let's let's start to see something. <laughs> I'm excited to start to see something in Rhino. We've been putting capsules out, but nothing's really happening here. So let's go ahead and we'll analyze the model. Okay, so in this tutorial, we're not looking at cross-section properties like beams or thicknesses of the shell. We're not defining material properties. So we're headed right to five under algorithms and we're gonna choose analyze. Okay, so I'm gonna plug that model to model. Okay, still nothing yet. It's this isn't displaying anything for us. So what we need to then do is go over to the results. And in all structure types that you're analyzing in Karumba, you'll have to have a model view. So we'll 
pull that down and we'll plug calculated model into model. <clears throat> okay, so you're starting starting to see something. It's starting to get exciting. You're you're seeing the forces, the, the negative Z forces, so you're seeing all these arrows. You're starting to see this form, um, the form deform. Uh, so it's starting to deform. And let's also bring out a shell view. So the shell view, this is, you know, it depends on what you're analyzing. In this tutorial, we're analyzing the shell. So we're choosing shell view. Okay, and I'm going to plug that model into model. Okay, so, you know, going back and forth between these two capsules is important to see what's actually happening. So I'm going to click on the half green, half white cylinder here, which is only displaying what capsule I select. Okay, so there is an input for colors, for inputting um, a gradient. You can input a gradient tool and you can change those colors. So that's something that you can experiment. I'm today just using the default colors. So again, there is an input. You would have to plug your gradient colors. Uh, you have to use your gradient. And I have a, we looked at, at actually at the beginning of this tutorial, the, the mesh coloring video. Um, so, you know, have a look at that. It shows different ways to assign colors to meshes, and I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. Okay. So, let's, let's look at a couple of these pull downs from these particular capsules. So there's one is a display scale and the other is render settings. These are both in the shell view. So at the moment we're looking at the cross section analysis and we're not we don't really we haven't given it a thickness. We haven't we're not we don't have a cross section to analyze. So that's not very helpful for us. Uh, that's probably why it's just one color at the moment. Then there is utilization which looks at the maximum stress capacity of the material and then we have displacement which so you're seeing the the darker purple colors is where the mesh is more deformed it's more displaced and then you can also look at different principal stresses okay so let's Let's look at these in terms of how do we collect data? How do we collect data from this? So one way is we can use a legend and you'll see here legend colors. I can plug my legend colors into color and then there is legend tags. So I can expand that. Okay. And you can you can rename these by just right clicking on them and changing the name. Okay, I'm going to expand this. So now you're starting to get actual information that relates to the model. So let's let's select this here. So you can see where there's you know a zero percent of stress based on this color, and when you're getting over a hundred percent stress based on the dark red so again we haven't we haven't really plugged in enough information to get a real output um, but you know it's a start but you know anything over a hundred percent is going to break so we can see where some of that is happening and as we change from utilization to displacement we can start to get values of displacement as well. So you can see where there's zero displacement, where nothing is moved in the mesh. So I think that's pretty cool to see. Okay, so now I want to look at applying more than one load. So you know, here's our number slider where we're working in the applying the load in the Z direction. So let's define that as a load case. So you'll see for the Z-Force loads capsule, there's an input for L case, and it's by default it's set to zero. And that, that's okay, we can leave that at zero, but 
I'd like to see that it is actually zero. Okay. And let's see what I'm going to turn on here. Okay. I haven't really dug into, we looked at shell view, I haven't really dug into model view. So I'm going to remember, I'm going to remember to, <laughs> to look at that. Okay, so, um, but for the moment, I just want to see a, uh, just to clean up the screen a little bit, I just want to see a resulting mesh. So I'm going to double click and type in mesh, and this is just a mesh container. So you'll see that coming out of the meshes of rendered shells, at the moment there's only one mesh. So it's just something that we'll want to keep an eye on. So I'm going to plug that in. Okay, and then I'm going to use Shift Control I, and I'm going to turn off the preview. Okay, so just just cleaning things up for you guys visually. Okay. All right, so I'm going to move this up, and I'm going to take it and start to drag it and hold down my Alt key. Okay, so this is going to become the negative x-force. So I'm starting to think about wind, let's say, pushing this form over. And right now, it's the force is in the z direction. So I need to replace that with the x direction. Okay, so I'm just getting rid of the z, just bypassing that and deleting it. And I'm going to plug that into the load. Now, I've there's been times where I forget to use the shift key, and then it seems like it's not working when I go from one load to the other. So make sure that your both loads are being plugged into the load capsule. Okay, so now you see that showing in real time. So let's, before we start to change any of these values, let's go back over now to the model view and let's let's go ahead and turn that on okay so now you're seeing the loads in both the x and the z because the result case is set to all so now we haven't defined the second load this x we haven't changed it to load case one so we're missing that so we need to do that so we'll go back over here, it's still set to zero. So I'm going to set that to, to one. Okay, so now under result case, I have zero and I also have one. Okay. So there, there is, there is uh, under display scales, you can you can change the defer deformation. You can fine tune it here. Okay, so that is something that you can visually fine tune. I think the default was about 50. Okay, and you can turn on and off. Like for example, we're seeing the loads. So if I don't wanna see the loads, I can turn those on, uh, on or off. Uh, same thing with supports. It's showing me those supports right now. Okay, so we have those types of options. All right, so I'm going to turn this, I'm going to go ahead and turn this back off. Okay. And now we can see low case one, which is pushing it, low case, or pushing it from the side. So low case one is our, our wind, low case zero is our gravity, or we can see those both together. All right, so we got through that pretty good. Uh, just trying to think if there's anything else that I want to show you in this Karumba video. If, if you want to add to the information here, please leave some comments below. If you found this tutorial helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And click on the links below, or the links on the video that are going to come up to show you some additional videos to go with this. 
stay safe healthy out there and i will see you next time